What's up, guys? This is Yuki coming at you with Microdose number three. Today, I wanted to talk about something really exciting that I saw relating to psychedelics and drugs in pop culture. So specifically in February 2023, John Oliver did a full like 20 minute episode on the benefits of psychedelics in therapeutic settings. And I wanted to dive into some of the topics that he covers within this video. And I was just really excited to see such a high profile show and and dude talking about psychedelics in such a beneficial setting. So I'll see you in a few seconds. I'm Yuki, joined by my co-host Reggie, and you're listening to Modern Day Hippie, the podcast about doing drugs in a responsible, fun, and safe way to improve your life. Before we jump into today's episode, a quick legal disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Our goal is to educate and inform others about the realities of substance use in an engaging format. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to attempt to recreate anything found in this episode or any of our other content. We are not confessing to any acts stated in this podcast. The content in this episode should not be treated as factual or real in any way. Now with that, we hope you enjoyed today's show. All right, just to kick off with a bit of context. So if you've never heard of John Oliver, he's this kind of late night talk show host. He's British. He has a very British dry sense of humor and all of his bits, which he's been doing for many, many years now. A lot of them are poking fun at the US politics, the economy, and just like all the crazy shit. And he does kind of half educational, half entertainment content, specifically relating to things happening in the world, current events, things like that. When he released this episode specifically on psychedelics for therapeutic purposes, I was really stoked to dive into it, to listen to it, and to share some of the findings that he had, some reflections that I had on it, and to share it with you guys in today's microdose. So he starts off the bit, and I'll link the YouTube link to to the show. It's about 20 minutes long, but, but great watch. So he starts it off with this hilarious clip of a BBC reporter who's doing like reports on like a big drug bust that just happened somewhere behind him. And he's literally standing right next to this giant pile of burning drugs. And apparently this was eight tons of confiscated heroin, opium, and some other drugs. And this reporter, you can tell as he's, you know, talking into the camera and trying to give, you know, professional story to BBC, he just like can't hold himself. He just can't help but like giggle and just kind of act a little bit crazy and fall apart. He'll just have this really like funny devilish smile and he can't keep it together. Uh, And I thought that was really funny. Like this is probably the most fucked up reporter that has ever been aired on TV or seen anywhere. Now, the focus of this John Oliver bit is specifically on psychedelics as they apply to therapy. So he kicks off with a very kind of bright and funny example of what psychedelics can do. And so he plays this clip of ASAP Rocky talking about the first time he ever did LSD and how he was having sex on the LSD. And he literally saw a rainbow shoot out of his dick and make the sound of like a piano playing while it came out. And that this was just like a wild experience that he had the very first time that he ever tripped. Then John Oliver transitions to talking about some great endorsements from people who were treated with psychedelics. One guy described it as, it's like doing therapy while being hugged by everyone who loves you in a bathtub full of puppies licking your face. This was specifically a veteran struggling with PTSD who felt profound effects after the first dose. And he said that there was about a 60% reduction in his symptoms of PTSD immediately after that first dose. There were also some clinical trials of MDMA for treating PTSD, and two-thirds of patients that took this clinical therapy, no longer qualified for a PTSD diagnosis two months after that treatment. That means that two thirds of these people literally no longer qualified to be considered under PTSD just 60 days after this experimental treatment. Now we go into a little bit of a history lesson. So John Oliver lays out that we actually used to be at this similar stage with psychedelics, but we really fucked it up. Like there was a lot of research, there's a lot of promise with psychedelics back in like the 60s and 70s, but but we messed it up. Historically, uh, psychedelics were originally used by indigenous groups, so things like psilocybin, ayahuasca, stuff like that. And LSD was first synthesized in a Swiss lab in the 1930s. Now, in the 1950s, there was a random banker dude, I think from New York 
who heard stories of this indigenous Mexican lady who had magic mushrooms and used them for healing. And so he kind of tracked her down, uh, went to her village and, you know, experienced the magic mushrooms that, that he offered. He actually recorded his story and it was published in Life magazine in 1957. At the time, Life magazine was literally the biggest publication in America. So it's something that pretty much every American adult read. And one of the main stories in that issue was this banker story about trying magic mushrooms in Mexico. After that story came out, it actually started a like stampede of just crowds going to this lady's village. And it pissed off the locals in that village so much that they actually burned down her house to try to get her to leave and get people to stop coming to their village from the US to try the magic mushrooms. Things really amped up when the U.S. military started doing tests where they would drop psychedelics on enemy soldiers. So they would essentially drop like LSD gas on soldiers. And there's legitimately an old video that's shown in the John Oliver bit of a test on soldiers that are like they're being instructed to do these like boot camp, like training things, you know, like walking together and and being coordinated and you can just tell they're completely like fucked up, uncoordinated, like looking at the sky, looking around. And this is like a real footage of uh, like an LSD test on soldiers from the 1960s. Then in 1966, CBS followed a man who got LSD therapy for alcoholism. Six months after the end of his treatment, he had no urges to drink. He had returned to school at the age of 30, which was a goal he'd always had because he didn't finish school, and it completely cured him of his alcoholism. Then, starting in the late 1960s, psychedelics really started getting associated with the counterculture, and the government started cracking down around that. There was a series of smear campaigns, so these really kind of biased, like bad studies that basically try to show that psychedelics could warp your chromosomes, they could change childbirth in women who would eventually have children, and just very anecdotal bullshit that literally dramatized like the fact that if you did psychedelics once, you would probably die. There was even a college dean who made up a story about half a dozen of his students who took LSD and looked at the sun so long that they went blind. It actually came out a little bit later that that this dean completely lied and made the story up as part of this smear campaign. Then President Nixon passed the Controlled Substances Act, which put LSD and psilocybin on the equivalent level of heroin as far as drugs go, which is just mind-blowing. And that's something that we're still dealing with the consequences of today in 2023 as we try to get psychedelics back into the mainstream fold and making it accessible to people who can actually use these substances for very healthy and and helpful things. Now, MDMA also got swept into this. So there was actually a study around the time that said MDMA given to monkeys gave them permanent brain damage. But that study was later retracted because they accidentally gave the monkeys meth instead of MDMA. I don't know how you mix those things up, but clearly it was not the MDMA causing that damage to those monkeys. Fast forward to closer to present day, the FDA granted breakthrough status recently for some of these different substances to be used in these clinical trials that that we talk about. So MDMA, for example, actually turns off the threat detection part of your brain, and it lets people confront memories that they wouldn't be able to face otherwise. And parts of these clinical trials are that the drugs must be used over multiple sessions under the supervision of professionals. So there's talk therapy involved during and after that make people more receptive to doing talk therapy while they're on the drug as well. It helps mute the fears away and heightens your brain's ability to make new connections. This is especially effective for veterans particularly going back to the veteran I mentioned earlier. So he actually tells a story of other mental health care that he got before he had drug-assisted therapy. So he literally went to like the VA's office. He said he was wanting to kill himself. And the office literally gave him six Xanax. They told him not to take it all at once because he would probably die if he did. And then they asked him to give his guns to a neighbor and come back to their office after the holidays. Like that is just depressing and ridiculous they straight up handed him enough drugs to kill himself if he really wanted to luckily he made it through and now he's actually leading uh, a big like bipartisan a uh, consensus effort to make drug assisted therapies more accessible to veterans around the u.s the tipping point here is that drugs are only available for these clinical trials so the fda will approve mdma then psilocybin and then maybe lsd for clinical use but there are some past mistakes that we need to avoid. So the way that psychs are administered and by whom is extremely important. 
psychedelic therapy isn't for everyone. People with history of schizophrenia, psychosis, things like that have to be in a very controlled setting and some should not even take it at all. And then the experiences can be very positive or hell realm experiences. I mean, I've had from the most positive, uplifting, incredible memories I've ever made have been on psychedelics. And then truly some of the most terrifying, terrible memories I've had have also come from psychedelics. But the crazy thing is even people who have bad experiences, they still feel like they benefit from them. And even in my own experience, I I do agree with that. In the long run, even those hell realm experiences can be very beneficial. The other big issue is accessibility. So these treatments can be extremely expensive and there are already companies that have filed patents for psychedelic compounds. So there's one company called Compass Pathways that patented the idea of set and setting as well as a specific psilocybin therapy. They're even trying to patent the concept of talk therapy on psychedelics, which is seems a little bit ridiculous. That's not a super unique like product or service that it seems like they can patent, but they're definitely going to try to so that they can get control over the market. And they've applied for these patents and it just shows how aggressive these companies can get. Because even from the beginning, a course on psychedelic therapy could cost anywhere from $15,000 and upwards, not to mention that there's just a general lack of mental health professionals in the US. So you're going to have these really big ticket prices for this therapy that is going to work extremely well, but most people will not be able to afford it. And imagine trying to get insurance companies involved in this. Who knows if they'll want to front the cost for what they see as experimental treatments for these different mental issues. Finally, it's a question of who's going to regulate these different substances. The FDA can't do this because they actually only work on medicines and technically these psychedelics are not medicines. If things go wrong across any of these parameters, whether it's how they're administered, whether it's positivity or negativity of experiences, whether there's issues of accessibility or regulation, we could very well go back to the same issues that we had last time this happened in the 60s and 70s. But there is truly such strong potential here. I will say the episode ends on a very positive note. So they actually go back and revisit the guy who was treated for alcoholism on LSD like decades before. And so this is 25 years later, they check in with him. This is just some random like news group. And he's still doing fantastic. He still has no urge to drink. He's never drank again. And it's completely changed his life. And that story really drives home the potential for these substances in treating all manner of mental disorders. There really is so much promise here and there are a ton of obstacles in the way, but it it all starts with education and trying to get more people just accustomed and aware of the benefits that these substances can can provide. I mean, 99% of people around the world to them, like alcohol is the only drug that should be done that is acceptable. And that just shouldn't be the case. If anything, that's one of the more damaging substances. There's very little good that can come out of it. Whereas by comparison, things like MDMA, LSD, psilocybin, ketamine, there's so many good potential use cases here. And so whether it's the John Oliver episode, which has been seen by millions of people, or it's our podcast, The Modern Day Hippie, uh, we definitely ask that you spread the word and tell people that you know, tell your friends, tell your parents about these different benefits that these drugs can have. I know for me, I've been slowly keeping my mom up to date with what is happening in this world and gotten her to a point where she is really curious about what is possible with these substances. And she even is at a point where she might want to try them. So we'll see if that happens. But otherwise, thanks for listening, guys. That's the pod. Truly, thank you for listening to the show. We seriously fucking appreciate it. If you want to help us out, just leaving a rating or a comment, you know, the drill would be incredibly helpful. But more importantly, share the knowledge and the love with your friends. Make sure they're getting the information they need on this topic that is so underserved and underappreciated in today's society. We'll see you all next week.